Uh, so welcome to our next segment on interview with an English teacher. Today I have uh, Dr. Sandra Quinones. Yes. Did I say that right? Yes. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. And um, I just am here to ask you some questions as a teacher. You know, why do you love teaching and maybe some resources you have that you can help other teachers with? And then uh, at, at the end of our time, if you could just, you know, share your channel and everything. So sure. I'm going to ask you first question. So how did you get into teaching and why do you, why do you teach? <laughs> Um, I got into teaching uh, basically when I, I'm originally from Boston. I'm Puerto Rican, but I was um, born and raised in Boston. And I did not expect to go into ESL teaching. I mean, the way I got into teaching is through my sister. My sister has special needs. And I, I, I used to go, when I would visit my aunt in Puerto Rico, she also was a, spe uh, she was a special needs teacher. So I thought, wow, my, my sister's special needs. Um, my, my aunt is doing this type of work. Maybe this is a sign and I would accompany her um, every day to the center that she would teach in, in Puerto Rico. And I completely fell in love with her rapport with the kids, um, her ability to lead the teacher. She was definitely a, a teacher leader. But then um, later on when I went to school for teaching and got my first job um, as a teacher, I wasn't thinking ESL. I was just thinking mainstream education. And I was placed, my first job was placed in a Portuguese bilingual classroom, it was a kindergarten, first grade, first grade combined classroom. And just, I completely fell in love with the students, learning about the Brazilian culture, Angolan culture, because I had students from Angola as well. And then I thought, yep, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. So then I enrolled in a master's degree program in bilingual, bilingual, bilingual education and the rest is history. So... Um, I love, love, love what I do. And um, I forget what was the other question you asked. <laughs> yeah, no, I kind of the why. And you, you explained the why you like teaching. And, you know, on your YouTube channel, I've noticed uh, it's called The Language Lady. I've noticed on your YouTube channel, you have a lot of really cool videos for teachers and just some, kind of some tips and tricks that you've provided others for. Um, so with that, I was going to ask, you know, um, why did you do that? Why did you start this YouTube channel that you're doing as well? The YouTube channel came as a byproduct of my, uh, the, my doctoral dissertation. Um, I, um, what I focused on was the, uh, the perceptions of middle school teachers of best practices for English language learners. And there was a lot of findings in it, but the main one was that one of the, the requests that these teachers had was, yes, I went to school, when I went to college, um, there was a course on how to meet the needs of English language learners, but they felt that it was very, not as, um, I don't know what the word is, like wasn't as specific enough, and there was a lot that wasn't covered that they wish they had had, and I just kept coming over and over again, and also working as an ESL director for many years, for about five, six years, and then working as an English language development specialist, it just, I would, it would always come up again, like, what do I do? I, I don't know how to start. I, I feel like I'm doing the right thing, but is this correct? And so um, at that time, I, I've always loved YouTube and I've always loved engaging with people, meeting from people from all over the world. And I thought, what if I just make it this, a channel, not thinking anything of it. And um, I've, I've loved every single moment of it, just learning because I also, Pre being a teacher, I always wanted to become an actress. That has always been my passion. I always loved theater and I love making people laugh. I love different characters. So I thought, oh my goodness, I can combine the two. I can help answer these, these pain points that teachers have, but at the same time, I can be quirky and create these characters and write a script and film it and edit and all these different things. And that's how that's how the language lady was was created. And um, I've, I've loved it. It's been so much fun. It feels that's, like a hobby. It doesn't even feel like it's work. <laughs> yeah, that's so. great. And so with that, uh, you mentioned that you were an ESL director. So did yes. you like in your role, have you had to like hire people too, like hire teachers? Yes, yes. In, in our, um, I had, I oversaw the English language development program as well as our Spanish immersion program. So, and we were a uh, well, it is, still is. It's a K through 12 um, school district. So I was charged with 11 schools. Yes, 11 schools. Plus there were some charter schools that I helped to support their program. Um, and yes, and we, we had to definitely look for teachers that really had a passion for our specific population. 
I mean, not only did we have to find English language development teachers, but we had to find teachers that understood our specific population, which was in the inner city. So most of our students uh, are so, of low socioeconomic background. And uh, also most, it's a Title I school. So that means that most of our students have free or reduced lunch. Uh, and just the things that they see on a daily basis it, you have to have a, a heart for students in that type of environment. And, you know, so there's that, that, all, that also piece that was really, really important to find. Yeah, it's just that heart for English learners and, and just that cultural demographic and helping yes. others in that way. Absolutely. Cool. Was the salary pretty low or how was that like for teachers in that area? No, it's actually one of the most competitive in, in that area. Um, I, nice. I can't remember what it was, but yes, it was very competitive. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people want to work in that particular environment, but it's, it's, it's one of those things where people have to make that difficult decision. Do they want to work in a, an area that the students, um, because they've been faced with so many hardships, it's not the easiest population to work with. So there's the turnover rate is really high. And uh, we have also just the, you really are faced with the fact that there are, we, there's limited resources and not as much funding. Um, there's also just the, the community perception of the school district. All those, there's so many things intertwined. It's like, you really, really, really have to feel like this is what you're, you're called to do because it is, it's not easy. It, it yeah. really is, but so rewarding. I mean, I loved every single minute working for, for that school district. Yeah. I found, you know, English teachers that I've talked with, you know, they have multiple hats as far as what they do as a job. They're not only a teacher teaching, oh, here's how you pronounce this, or, you know, here's what this grammar means. A lot of times they're doing like trauma counseling or they're like doing, you know, um, emotional well-being and you know there's Absolutely. a lot of other hats they have to put on like they almost have to act like a parental mentor in some way absolutely you know? i mean also there's that legal aspect you have to really know the law because you're going to have teachers who are going to want to violate the family's rights and also you have to help it from the parent standpoint like this is this is your right you have the right to ask for this because a lot of them come from cultures where you're you the authority says it and you say yes and move on I'm like no no you have the right to speak up and and ask for this this and so that's something that i i'm faced with on a lot of a lot a lot of times that i have to really know the law inside and out so i can defend and advocate um on behalf of the students and their families yeah and i think understanding their cultural background each student's different cultural background can help absolutely you that too. Absolutely. I, I think we've learned in our in our country, um, you know, we, we we in the U.S. specifically, it's very like guilt driven. It's more like law, practice, documentation for everything. Um, and in many other cultures, it's shame honor based. So it's like you yes. know, kind of, kind of who, you know, and if you kind of if you throw a rock in this community, that pebble is going to ripple and you're going to have absolutely it's going to be really hard to get back up here if, yes. if you were knocked down, you know, so it's kind of. Kind of interesting to, to deal with the honor shame. How, have you experienced that too in your, your your students or maybe even the teachers you worked with? Like how no, to navigate that? Not so much. Um, it's more the the first, the guilt thing that you were talking about previously, but no. Um, but we do, what I've experienced more often is just almost like they're afraid to advocate. I know that they put a lot on the teacher, the teacher, the teacher, the teacher is the wealth of all knowledge. I don't think they realize how expansive it is that, that for this, you go to a guidance counselor for this is the principal. This is the central admin, you know, um, office, that type of thing. But I also think that they see what I do see and which breaks my heart. And I feel that we have to do more parenting workshops to equip them so that they realize that they bring a lot of value to the tables that a lot of the parents feel that, well, I don't, I don't really, I'm not a good parent because I can't be in school or, or volunteering, but no, you are, you're just as involved as anyone else because you ask your, your child, did you do your homework? That's parenting involvement. So redefining what parenting, parent involvement means, what it looks like is really important. And then we also see that a lot of our parents feel 
um, not as equipped because they, the language, they don't feel as, as strong. So they feel that they're missing out or so. And that also makes me more cognizant that, wow, I have, a, I have to really be mindful of that. Like, wow, this one thing they could miss out on because this was sent out in this particular poster was only translated, was only available in English for whatever reason, things like that. It's just, it's, it's exhausting because you're constantly thinking from so many different angles because I want the very best for our students and the families and, oh, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard, it's hard, but so rewarding. Yeah, and so teachers, you know, working with younger, you know, middle school or younger children, you know, they do have to then almost mentor those parents as well and, 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 and talk to them and be like, hey, by the way, I know you've only been here a few years, but if you if you look at this and this, it's going to help you, you know, like those kind yeah. of resources are really. And there's that fine line because you want to be a mentor and provide resources, but you also don't want to make them feel that you're telling them how to parent or how mm. to be involved. So it's very, you know, I'm constantly trying to be very cognizant of that be very careful how I talk. And also culturally, because um, I'm Puerto Rican, so I understand how to speak and engage with Puerto Rican parents, but I have several students from Mexico. And the way I know sometimes I can come off as aggressive. So I have to be very careful, like how do I word things and the tone in my voice and, you know, because Puerto Ricans, we're, <laughs> if, you're, if those of you who are watching and are familiar with our culture, I mean, we're very loud, we're very expressive, we're very energetic. And so it doesn't come across that way to all parents from Latin American countries. So I have right. to be aware of that. So. Right. And I think regionally too, like students from Mexico, they come from different areas and different cities in Mexico. And so, you know, South Mexico is very different than North Northwest or yes. Northeast Mexico. And so, yes. you know, the culture pockets, uh, same in the U.S., you know, North, South, you know, it's mm. colder or warmer cultures, you know, learning how that nuance plays into how you teach. I think that's huge. absolutely. And so for, for, for teachers, I know you've done a lot for teachers with like your tips and tricks and stuff. So I was curious too, you know, what are some things you've done or projects you've worked on? Like, um, have you spoken at different, you know, um, places, things like that? Yes. I know you, you're, you're pretty big in the English teaching community and you're growing in that. And uh, I just want to hear a little bit more about that too. Um, so I, I was able, this was wonderful. I had the opportunity to collaborate with Saddleback Education Webinar um, to provide some tools and strategies on how to take the gaming or educational gaming aspect in the classroom and how to do that virtually. And that was such a great experience because it also allowed me to connect with other teachers who are doing the same work. Um, that, that's where I got to know Esther Park, who's also a wonderful person. I highly encourage anyone watching this to watch and connect with her. She's amazing. We're planning to do some projects in the future. It also allowed me to collaborate with Teacher Hard Out, and they, they've never had anyone do anything regarding English as a second language. So that was phenomenal just to share. In that conference, I did I also talked about uh, empowering students through student voice with um, writers workshop. And also I shared how we did it virtually and how we took the students culture into the classroom and used that as a, as a springboard for conversations about curriculum and using very, um, so what I'm looking for, creative ways for them to share what they know. So through podcasts, uh, through uh, a magazine that, we're, that we have our students uh, subscribe to. And next year, which I'm very excited, is that we're going to take it one step further with our students and have a multicultural club. And they're going to be fundraising and work, learning about Nicaragua so that we can help families there. So that's something else. I'm sorry, I am like feel like I'm going off topic. Oh, cool. um, and then um, recently, because of my collaboration with Nicaragua, with a, uh, with a university there, Kaiser University, they asked me to do a, a workshop on uh, American culture and traditions and how that affects the workplace. And then I also have collaborated with the U.S. Embassy um, collaboration with uh, Access in Nicaragua, and they've asked me to do several workshops for their students on American culture and so forth. So it's, yes, I mean, it's just been, been very enriching for me because it's opened my eyes to, to just what's going on in the, you know, ESL, EFL, however you want to call it, the English language um, world in other countries. And 
I'm taking back a lot with me and in my, I, if you will, in my arsenal, in my backpack, just so that I can become a better English language development teacher myself. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So if you were to like tell an English teacher or even an English, so there's kind of two here. I have two audiences here on this channel. I have, I have my English learners who watch this. And then I also have a few teachers who watch some of this, these videos I put here on YouTube. And so if you were to, let, let's do two. Uh, if you were to speak to an English teacher uh, about, you know, improving their life or skill in some way, what would you say to them? And then after that, if you could share um, for an English language learner, if they could improve their lives in some way, what would you say to them? So I would say for English teachers, never stop learning, never, even if you graduate with your certificate to teach or go to the university to get your degree, never stop learning because there's always something to learn. So take a, a grasp of workshops. Uh, and I feel like there's so much more available now even that's free that were available to me when I was starting as an English language development teacher. And this is my 22nd year in the, the profession. And I think that's another reason why I was very passionate about creating the channel because that didn't exist for me. <laughs> like I had to learn by, you know, so paying for um, magazines and articles and attending all these different workshops. But it was, I mean, to actually go on YouTube and just type in how to um, teach, how to integrate speaking for English language learners. Never. I mean, you know, and I didn't have a community outside of my building. We were just by ourselves pretty much. So never stop learning. And also join Facebook groups, join Facebook groups and interact with other teachers, even if they're from a different country, because they might be doing something different that you're not doing and vice versa and you can learn from one another. Um, and I, I would just, think, again, I, I would encourage signing up for workshops as much as you can, um, purchasing books, reading articles, be on top of the research because it will make you a stronger and better teacher. Now for English language learners, I would say, just give yourself grace and just, you know, you know more than what you, you're giving yourself credit for. And I would say, connect with other uh, first, speaking, first speaking teachers in the field that you may, or anyone, I mean, that you feel that is strong in the language so that you can converse with them, um, expand your knowledge, uh, particularly academic, you know, the type, not the, so much the social, which that is important as well, but you want to be interacting with other people that are in a similar field as yourself so that you're picking up the, the language, the skills, and people that are going to push you to, to feel more comfortable in the language. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. So yeah, thanks for sharing that, those tips and advice. And Welcome. you know, the last question I have for you uh, during this time too is, you know, if people want to support you or go like learn more about you, what can they do or where can they go? They can go to the, my YouTube channel, which is called The Language Lady, where I post uh, videos on whatever it is that teachers are requesting for the time. I only make videos based on areas of need that, that teachers have particularly asked for. And they can also follow me on Instagram. I'm also um, there as The Language Lady. And there is more personal. So I love to address people's questions one-on-one. -on -one. They might watch a video and then hop on Instagram and write to me directly about questions that they have or clarifications. And I will also share more about my day-to-day -day life as a teacher there and things that are coming up and how I, how I handle them. And um, I'm always, always sharing workshops, resources, games, anything, lessons that I have done that has, have really helped. And it's been great. I love the, the, just the opportunity to interact with many teachers on there has been great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your heart and your story and the resources for the teaching community, because I know a lot of Absolutely. English teachers and even English learners can learn a lot from you and, and your, your channel, and you know, hopefully thank you'll get you. more engagement. And I hope things go well with you know, the embassy and the university in, in Nicaragua. Thank That's you. Great. Thank so you. I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, everyone, if you're watching us, go ahead and just hop over to her channel. I'll have a link in the description. You can go to The Language Lady, and you can subscribe to her channel and check out some of her cool videos as well as connect with her on Instagram, and you can find more English resources there. Again, my name is Alex with uh, ESL with Purpose, 
and I'm here to share this with you, interview with an English teacher. If you're an English teacher and you want to do an interview with me, feel free to email me at alex at eslwithpurpose.com, and I will um, set up an interview with you and put you here on the YouTube channel as well. Again, I just want to say thank you, Dr. Uh, Sandra uh, Quinones. Did I get it right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yes, thank you. It's, it's been a pleasure and an honor. Thank you.